Let's go through VirtualBox now. Now VirtualBox is free and most of it is open source, um, but not all of it. So if you go to this page here, you can see that uh, this is the downloads link. It supports Windows, Mac OS X, Linux, and even Solaris. And here's the download link for the operating system that you want. So here we're going to download the uh, Windows version. So click here and that's going to download the executable. And we also want to download this here. So this is all supported platforms, a link there. Now what that is, is VirtualBox, most of it is open source, but there are some things that are closed source. So they come separately and they come within this. And it's things like support for USB 3.0, it's um, VirtualBox RDP and also disk image encryption as well. So uh, click that and download that as well. And if we go to where we've downloaded it. And there we have VirtualBox and we need to click double click on that. Run it and it's a pretty standard install. You go through all of the options. Now, for setting this up as a test environment, it's OK to select all of these. This is just giving you a warning that your network card is going to disconnect and then reconnect as this is installed. And you need to click yes to the drivers and the uh, security questions. You can click always trust if you like from Oracle. I'm not going to though because I don't really fully trust Oracle, even though this is just a test machine for the course. And we can start. Now we've gone to OS boxes. I'm choosing an operating system at random here. In this case, it's Linux Lite, but this could apply to any operating system that you're downloading. And that's going to allow me to download a VDI version for VirtualBox. And that can be opened by clicking on New, selecting the operating system as it is. In this case, it's a Linux version. Next, next and use an existing virtual disk looks light these are the virtual disk formats and there we go and i can start that And here it's just starting to boot like any other operating system. So I remove that. If you download an OVA or OVF file, and you can find those sorts of files here uh, on this link, uh, which I've downloaded, then you can go to File and Import Application look for the application that you've downloaded and that's this one so you can see there it's an OVA file next and it gives you the opportunity here to change your network settings and various other settings so if we click import this is going to take a little time depending on the speed of your machine once it's imported you'll be able to see it here and there it is running and that's the operating system Windows 7 and you can right click settings and change all of the usual settings that you can see network and we would want that to be bridged as discussed if you want to be able to view the network traffic and not have it on that you can see there it's changing the uh, network settings because I've changed it to bridged and it's uh, and it's working and these are all the virtual 
drivers and devices. That's your bridge network, USB, video memory, etc. Now, if you want to set up a virtual machine operating system from a disk or from an ISO, you need to go to new and you need to set up your virtual machine template first. So in this case, I'm choosing a Linux Debian 32 bit. And you'd select whatever it is that you're going to use. Create a virtual disk now, create. Using VDI is fine. Most of the default settings will be fine for a test environment. Dynamically allocate, this is better. This means that it will increase the size of the virtual disk as opposed to creating one large disk, which will save you more space. Eight gig on file limit should be fine, unless you're particularly creating large files. And then we have to put the disk in this machine and start it. So if we go on settings and storage, and we can see here we have an empty disk. Now if I click here or click here, I can choose whereabouts I want to get that disk from. So if you actually have a physical disk, then you want to choose a disk, choose where you're going to get that disk from. Maybe it's on the, the D drive. Or you can choose a virtual disk like the ISO that I have downloaded. And that's a 32-bit version there. And so therefore it's mounted in there. Click OK. Start. And there you go. It starts the process of installing as it would with any operating system that you've got. If it happens to be Windows, you're going to go through the Windows process. This is the Debian process. I've started the graphical version of the uh, install for Debian, and you'd go through this to install it. And one of the reasons why you download virtual images instead is it saves you having to go through this process of installation because someone else has done it for you if you've got the virtual machines already downloaded and set up and configured. But obviously, you know, if you want something specific to you, then you're going to need to uh, install it and configure it yourself. VirtualBox has something called Guest Additions. This is similar to VMware Tools. It adds features like cut and paste between the guest and host and better support for other guest OS features. But VirtualBox don't make it very clear as to how to install this. So... So right click on the virtual machine that you're interested in, settings, then to storage, and then select an empty disk slot. You can add one if you don't already have one. Then select here, choose virtual optical disk. And you want to navigate your way to wherever you've installed VirtualBox. So here it's program files, Oracle, VirtualBox. And you'll see there is an ISO file that they've put there called vbox guest editions .iso. click on open and you'll see it's added that as an iso image and that will be available when you boot the operating system it acts just like any other iso disk so click ok and then let's start the operating system and access that disk so you can see here it's uh, mounted the disk so I need to run the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, depending on which version I have. That's 32, that's 64. So I'm going to run this one. And follow through all of the options. And then a reboot will always be required. And to enable the extra features, go to Settings, Advanced, and then Clipboard Sharing. You can choose whether or not it's host to guest, guest to host, bidirectional, and drag and drop. So you can drag something from here into the operating system. Obviously, this is all um, a security issue, um, but this is a test environment that we're setting up. You can also set up shared folders as well. So you can share between your guest and your host operating system. Again, security issue, um, but this is just a test environment only. 
So that's guest additions. Now you also need to install the extension pack for VirtualBox. And remember this is for USB 2 and 3 controller support, virtual RDP, VM disk image encryption, but you can Google it to find out more about what it supports. But basically it gives you the full functionality of VirtualBox. So if you go to File and Preferences and Extensions, click here, select the extension file which you downloaded, which is this. Open and it's going to tell you what it's doing here. And you can see there it's saying pretty much what I already said about USB, RDP, there's also some webcam things, disk encryption, install. Um, you can read the license if you wish. I agree. Yes. This will start to install the extension. OK. And there we go. Extension is installed and that functionality is now available to you within VirtualBox. One of the great features that VirtualBox has is snapshots, which is something that VMware Workstation Player doesn't have, but the Pro version does have. And snapshots enable you to take a full static version of the memory and the hard disk and then continue using the operating system. And then at some point, you can decide to go back to that version if you wish. Another way of using snapshots is you can fork off different things that you're wanting to try. So you install one thing and snapshot that, install something else and snapshot that, and you can switch back and forth between, between the two. You can also test out something, see that it doesn't work, go back to the previous snapshot. So snapshots are really great and particularly useful for testing. And this even gives you an option here to clone the whole virtual operating system.